Hello, Jeff Zwerink, and welcome to Give and Take, the segment of our show where we explore important scientific ideas to help you be more convinced of the truth of Christianity. Today, we're joined again by Fuzz Rana, and we are going to be looking at the issue of soft tissues in dinosaur fossils, and does it mean that the Earth is young? Fuzz, good to have you back on the show. Jeff? So kind of outline the discovery here of, you know, we found these soft tissues. What is it that they found? What does it look like? And why is it a big deal? Yeah, well, in my estimation, uh, the discovery of soft tissue remnants associated with fossils is one of the, the major breakthroughs in paleontology in the last decade or so. Uh, and we have evidence for soft tissue remnants in fossil remains that go back as far as 500 million years in age. But the quintessential example would be the work of Mary Schweitzer, who uncovered uh, a, about a decade or so ago uh, these soft tissue materials from the femur of a T. rex specimen that dates at 65 million years. And these materials looked like essentially the remnants of, of blood vessels. And in the interior, you could actually see these ovals that looked like they were the remnants of red blood cells. And she was even able to isolate collagen and heme, uh, which is the component of hemoglobin that binds oxygen. And so on the basis of her discovery, paleontologists went out and began to look for soft tissue remnants in a whole host of fossils and have discovered uh, example after example after example. So, so this is so, a huge uh, advance in paleontology. Really sounds like it is. Let, 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 help us, help me to understand a little more. Is it that they're finding like blood cells that have been fossilized or are they finding something that's more akin to the blood cells themselves? It's more akin to the blood cells themselves. So this is actually the soft tissue material that is derived from the original material. It's not mineralized. Uh, it, it's uh, it's bona fide organic material that they're recovering. So, so you've got these fossils of a di or a, you know some sort of femur from a dinosaur that is that has been fossilized, and then within the within the confines of the fossil, there are these soft tissue remnants, which presumably over sixty five million years or whatever should have decayed away and no longer be existing. Right, and this is where, from a, a paleontology standpoint, where this discovery is so radical because nobody, and I mean nobody, thought soft tissue materials would survive the preservation process. Uh, and, and so this, this has been capitalized by young earth creationists who argue that, um, that because soft tissue materials shouldn't survive for tens of thousands of years, let alone tens of mm -hmm. millions or hundreds of millions of years, it means that the fossils cannot be th th that old. They must be only a few thousand years old, which means that the dating techniques used to date those fossils must be suspect, which means those same dating techniques which are used to date the right. earth then must fail as well. Well, that seems like a pretty reasonable argument. I mean, you know, the, you know you've got this stuff here, shouldn't be there. Um, the, we find it, that means, okay, maybe there's a problem. I mean, that's kind of a basic sanity check on our dating in some sense. That's a, a way to look at it. So Yeah, yeah. I When I first saw this argument from a young earth perspective, I was taken aback. It's like, wow, this is really uh, compelling, at least at the surface. Mm -hmm. But you and I both know that radiometric techniques are indeed reliable. And there's a, you know, a number of ways that you can show or demonstrate the reliability of, of radiometric dating techniques. And in, in the book, Dinosaur Blood in the Age of the Earth, where I wrote about this issue, mm -hmm. I talk about how we can know radiometric dating is reliable, not assuming anything about the mechanism of radiometric dating, just if this was an off-the-shelf analytical method, mm -hmm. how would we know that it was giving us results that were reliable? And I show how people have done work that validates radiometric dating by applying it to samples in which right. we know what the age is and getting the right result. So the bottom line is there's no reason to think radiometric dating is unreliable, which means right. there must be some way these soft tissues can survive for that duration of time. Well, so you've investigated this, and I know we've talked enough to 
I know that there's a there is some mechanism or at least ideas right. for do that. What what are the things that people have investigated that should right. say, well, maybe maybe this is a reasonable thing to think that the soft tissue is actually 65 million. Years yeah, old. well, I mean, the, the concept to keep in mind is that there are two competing mechanisms. Mm -hmm. When you've got soft tissue material, there's a, a number of mechanisms in the environment that's going to break it down or degrade it. Right. But there's also a mineralization process going on. And so if you can encase that soft tissue material within a mineral encasement, uh, before it degrades, it will once it's encased, it'll preserve it for perhaps indefinitely. And so, so, so it's this, a race this is against akin time. to like vacuum packing, if you will. So mm -hmm. if I could kill all the bacteria inside a package of meat, seal it up so that nothing gets in, I could set it out on the counter for days, and just simply because there's nothing in there, yes. it will not decay. Similar sort of process here. Yeah, that's a, a great way to think about it. And, and so we have discovered. Uh, a number of mechanisms that can delay the decomposition process long enough mm. to, to allow for that mineral encasement to happen. Now, it doesn't happen in every fossil. Right. There's certain environmental conditions in which the fossil forms that are more conducive to preservation than others. But there was a recent study showing that the same chemical process that takes place when you burn toast <laughs> uh, actually uh, is involved in the preservation process of soft tissues. And it essentially is catalyzed by iron, mm -hmm. which would be released from red blood cells when the organism dies, okay. and oxygen. And, and so those two materials will catalyze this process, which causes the uh, soft tissue material, the molecules that make it up, to undergo what's called cross-linking, where these materials are just have all these chemical bonds that form that kind of link them together into this mass of, of, of organic material that's very difficult to break down that is essentially impermeable to microbial attack. Hmm. And so we, the, the mechanism that causes toast to burn actually is happening during the preservation process. Well, and, and if and, I get what you're saying there, the the materials to cause that, or the, the materials that drive that mechanism are present in the environment just because of the nature of the soft tissue and the blood mm -hmm. cells. It, that's, a, that's a process that's likely to happen in that environment is what the, I get you yeah, saying. Yeah, that's right. And, and there's other mechanisms that people have discovered that seem to contribute to the process. The actual molecular structure, mm -hmm. um, is critical. Some molecular structures are highly durable and are much more likely to be preserved than other structures that are more fragile. And so what we, we see when we look at the details of the soft tissue materials that have been discovered is essentially results that make sense. It's what we would expect if indeed there were these preservation mechanisms at play. And as people continue to study this process, they're uncovering more and more mechanisms that could contribute. Mm -hmm. So this has gone from being something completely unexpected to something that in retrospect, we can explain very nicely in an old earth framework. So this isn't really evidence for a young earth at all. Well, thanks Fuzz, I appreciate mm -hmm. your comments. You know, I really do remember when the discovery of soft tissues and dinosaur fossils came out and it was a big deal. How could this possibly be? Does this mean that the earth is young? And what I find fascinating is that as scientists investigated and dug into the problem, they investigated, tried to figure out what was going on, they really realized that what we find is what we would expect. So though our intuitions were wrong, as we understood better, creation really does make sense. You know, I would encourage you to go to reasons.org, check out Fuzz's blog on this topic. Just search for soft tissue preservation. You'll find his blog and that will equip you to understand how this incredible mechanism works and how you can use it to point to the incredible creation and the God who created it all.